What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I'm a gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve bloating, gas, and digestive problems so they can look and feel their best. Can the carnivore diet cure SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? That is the focus of today's video. If you don't know what the carnivore diet is already, it is exactly as it sounds. It's a diet centered around eating just animal protein, such as meat, fish, poultry, and eggs. The bacteria that actually cause SIBO thrive on things like sugar, carbohydrates, and fiber. So the idea behind eating a carnivore diet is that we're going to remove all of these things, removing all sugar, all carbohydrates, and all fiber. And if we do that, hopefully the bacteria will starve and die off. As of right now, in June 2023, there are three generally accepted methods of treating SIBO. These are the elemental diet, herbal antimicrobial, and antibiotics. There is substantial research on these and many practitioners, including myself, have used them effectively to treat clients with SIBO. But I have found a ton of videos online on YouTube of people sharing their opinions and personal experiences with carnivore diet for SIBO. So I was curious to see, is there any actual research that supports people doing this? Can the carnivore diet actually cure SIBO? I put the emphasis on cure because there are other diets out there such as low fod map diet that are reducing the amount of symptoms. However, they have not been shown to be able to actually get rid of SIBO. So I sat down at my computer and I began searching for any research on this topic. After looking, I found one single study, which this is the only one that exists to the best of my knowledge. It was a 2021 study conducted in Sweden called a zero carbohydrate carnivore diet can normalize hydrogen positive small intestinal bacterial overgrowth lactulose breath test, a case report. This case report includes included only six patients, which is a very small study. All six of these patients were diagnosed with hydrogen SIBO before starting the carnivore diet. This case report considered patients to be positive for hydrogen SIBO if they had either of the following on their lactulose hydrogen breath test. An increase in hydrogen by 20 parts per million or greater from the baseline reading within the first 90 minutes of the breath test. And the second method was if there was a double peak present in the results on their breath test. In addition to being positive for hydrogen SIBO, five out of these six patients also tested positive for intestinal methanogen overgrowth, and this is diagnosed by having a methane level of over 10 parts per million at any point throughout this test. The six people in this trial were women aged 22 to 65, and they were meant to do this carnivore diet for four to six weeks. In terms of the diet, I'm going to read off here for you. All patients were instructed to follow a strict zero carbohydrate, zero fiber carnivore diet for two to six weeks. The diet was exclusively composed of animal fats and proteins, all types of meat, organ meats, fish, poultry, tallow, not sure what that is, lard and eggs, no vegetables, vegetable oils or dairy products except for butter was included. Extra intake of table salt was recommended to compensate for sodium loss. The patients could drink coffee, tea and water, but no sweetened beverages or diet sodas, no caloric limit or other restrictions were implied. The patients were encouraged to eat as much and as often as they wanted. So it looks like they're actually doing this diet for two to six weeks, not just four to six weeks. And as for the results, drum roll please, all five of the patients that used the carnivore diet for four to six weeks all ended up negative on their follow-up breath test. So it worked. Here on the screen are the before and after images of their breath test, the before being on the left and the after being on the right. They're a little bit difficult to see, but the yellow circles indicate hydrogen and the pink circles indicate methane. A few of these patients even had very, very high hydrogen hydrogen levels on their initial test over 100 parts per million. The sixth patient only did the carnivore diet for two weeks, but still ended up being negative for SIBO on her follow-up test. In fact, her hydrogen level went all the way from 150 parts per million down to 20 parts per million, a 130 parts per million drop, which is pretty impressive. And some of these patients also saw noticeable decreases in their methane levels as well. All right, so three takeaways from this study. Number one, this is the only study that I found that I think exists exists that test the carnivore diet and SIBO and only six patients were involved. Normally in a case like this, I would say we need a lot more studies to kind of figure out if this works or not. However, the results happen to be strikingly good and everybody benefited. All six patients eliminated their hydrogen SIBO, even when some of them had really, really high levels. Number two, I can't really speak on the long-term use of the carnivore diet. I don't know if avoiding all other types of foods for a long period of time besides animal-based meats and proteins as 
because there are some really important things that carbohydrates and fiber do, such as regulating hormone levels and contributing to a healthy microbiome. For most people, I would probably say that it will be a good idea at some point to discontinue a carnivore diet and reintroduce other foods into their diet. For some people, using the carnivore diet may be the best approach for them long term, so it's just a matter of individuality and what works best for you. But in using it to treat SIBO for two to six weeks, it seems like a treatment option that is relatively safe, effective, and inexpensive. And by doing this, you're also not incurring the cost of buying a lot of extra supplements or antibiotics, and you also don't have to take as many pills. The only charge would really be your grocery bill. And three, this is a little bit unrelated to the last two points, but I found it very interesting. All six patients in this study, in the lab work they did before the breath test, they all came up to be deficient in magnesium and vitamin B12, which are directly related to stomach acid levels. This reinforces the fact that it is very common for patients that have SIBO to also have low stomach acid. The downsides of using the carnivore diet are pretty obvious that you are very limited in the types of food that you're allowed to eat. Things that are allowed are meat, fish, poultry, organ meats, eggs, butter, lard, bone broth, salt, pepper, and then black coffee with absolutely nothing else added to it, and herbal tea with absolutely nothing else added to it are also typically allowed as well. Finally, I'll, the last thing I'll leave you with is some other considerations that you may want to know before starting a carnivore diet. One is that you may lose weight. This may seem counterintuitive, and there's probably two reasons for this. One is that carbohydrates help your body retain water, so some of the water that you're losing will be water weight. And second is you'll probably consume fewer calories than you normally would. Protein and fat, which are the two macronutrients that you're going to be consuming in the carnivore diet, are very satiating, meaning that they're very filling and they leave you feeling satisfied after you eat. Therefore, you may feel more satisfied eating fewer calories than you normally would when you were eating carbohydrates in your diet. The second is that it's easier to get dehydrated, which I just hinted at. Whatever quantity of water you normally drink, I would probably try to increase that a little bit if you're going on the carnivore diet diet. Third is you may experience loose stools or diarrhea due to the increase in fat content that you're going to be consuming. This typically improves over time as your body acclimates. Number four is that lean cuts of meat are not ideal. Eating lean cuts of meat such as chicken breast, turkey breast, tilapia, or a lean ground beef or ground turkey are probably not great options to do. For example, if you normally eat 2,000 calories per day, you would have to eat five pounds of chicken breast or 2.25 kilograms in order to reach 2,000 calories. And another example is you'd have to eat 20 tilapia fillets in order to reach 2,000 calories. No thank you. Even if losing a few pounds is something that you are definitely open to doing, eating only lean cuts of meat will probably leave you being incredibly hungry and constantly craving more food. And if I had to guess, it would probably be a very miserable experience trying to do this. Number five is don't eat just one type of protein. Eating various cuts of animal proteins during the carnivore diet is great for two reasons. One, you'll get a wider variety of vitamins minerals and nutrients and two it'll suck way less you won't get as bored and lastly number six is you must be 100% adherent the goal here is that we're trying to completely starve the bacteria of their nutrients that they need to survive which is sugars carbs fibers if we're 95% compliant but every third fourth fifth day we're slipping up and maybe eating a bag of chips or a bowl of pasta the entire month the effort that you are putting in may be all for nothing that is all for today I hope you found this video helpful especially if you were diagnosed with SIBO and are investigating treatment options. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel for more content on gut health, SIBO, and fitness related topics. I post a new full length video every Monday evening and YouTube shorts throughout the week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.